Hey, today I'm coming to you from La Company de Vins au Naturel, the country of supernatural wines. This awesome wine bar is located at a historic center street where Chinatown meets Little Italy in Soho. This is a sweet, casual bar, not with an amazing, extensive wine list, but they got kick ass eats. Look how cool this place is, all these hidden nooks and crannies. This is one of the sweetest wine bars you'll ever go to. Look at these dishes. Look at the charcuterie board. It's ridiculously good. Wagyu beef belly cheesesteak. Oh my god. Look at this creamy burrata with speck and melon. So creamy, delicious. Awesome chilled prawns. Noki Parisian. The garlic scapes and wild mushrooms. This is a got to have. This is one of my faves. So damn good. Shaved pineapple and speck. Wow. Who thinks of this stuff? Spring tart flambe flatbread and bacon and fromage block. Another got to have. Look at this. Scallops with pickled fennel and brown butter. Have you ever seen Wagyu beef belly sliders? Who else in town has that? Eat, run, don't walk, come check it out before it's gone. It's being dished out by Eric Boyard, the managing partner and head chef. I got to sit down and chat with him. My name is Eric Bolliard. I'm the chef managing partner of Company de Vans de Naturel. I have a degree from Boston University School of Management and I was looking to go a totally different direction. Had a job out of college, quit before I started uh, for the opportunity to just dive into a kitchen, see if I wanted to go further and started working for $8 an hour, a little place in Long Island, nothing crazy. Never went back. So. 13, 14 years later, here we are, um, and it's been a whole roller coaster of trajectory and highs and lows, ebbs and flows. Uh, but yeah, it wouldn't change being an integral part of the hospitality world for anything. But yeah, I never, never had worked a day in my life in a restaurant, serving, kitchen, or anything of the sort. Um, so really starting from the ground up. I uh, wanted to see if I needed to invest in culinary school. I ultimately did not. Do not think you need to go to culinary school to advance in this in this industry. Um, I support it, but it wasn't for me. So I ended up just working my way through the ranks. I think experience, getting to restaurants, staying there long enough to actually, you know, get the depth of, of what you can learn from a one particular place. Uh, I never jumped around, but I did give you know integral time to each place and. and work with that individual chef and I think that's the most rewarding thing to really just kind of dive deep into, into an establishment and, and learn all of the roles and um, that's, that's, that's how I found to be most, most suitable for advancing in the industry. So I um, ended up running a restaurant in Long Island, uh, really cool little bistro, daily changing blackboard menu, learned a lot from a young guy, um, really fun, just super busy spot and then ended up going to cook in Spain. I promised myself I would cook in Spain before I got stuck back in the city in Manhattan. So um, um, ended up through a friend of a friend at an amazing restaurant uh, in the Basque country called Astora Chibari and small little spot in the middle of the mountains. Super incredible, most inspiring place I've ever cooked and I still use a lot of that inspiration for how I cook today, the ingredients that I use and um, ended up going from, from there to, to the UK. Didn't want to come back to New York quite yet. Spent uh, another three or four months in London cooking at St. John Bread and Wine. And then ultimately got back into, into New York. Ended up at 11 Madison Park. First, first restaurant I ever worked at in New York City, actually, uh, surprisingly. And just did the whole thing. Um, that hierarchy, slowly but surely worked my way up in the ranks there. Saw, saw all of the all of the kitchen and uh, what a phenomenal time that was to be there. But now we've uh, moved on and you know here we are, Company de Monster Natural. Uh, I have an artisanal food product company making toasted brown butter, and um, this is obviously an integral part of, of the week here at the wine bar. The Company de Monster Natural is uh, basically a wine bar that was started by um, our partners in Europe, three awesome French guys from the south of France, and they they wanted to do a wine bar where natural wine was not only the focus, but super natural wine, all of the things that, that uh, they loved and respected, whether classical or natural or biodynamic, whatever it may be, 
they wanted to give homage to all of these beautiful things, um, not just getting stuck in that realm of natural wine in France and Paris at the time. So uh, they opened one in, in the UK, in London, um, where their other headquarters is, and then uh, my business partner, Caleb Ganser, came here. He took over as the GM wine director and brought me out to do the food. Uh, we were historically friends, always wanted to work together, and uh, it, it, it ended up kind of falling, falling into place. Those who inspire me the most in the industry are actually my peers, um, the next generation of, of chefs in New York City. Um, I've been inspired by, by other bigger name chefs, but most, most importantly, I, I get a lot of my inspiration just from the people that are close to me, uh, the people that I've seen grind on the same playing field as I, as, as I have, and seeing them succeed, and seeing them bloom and, and expand and create. Well, so the menu's super, super small, super focused, so I actually love everything that's on there. I don't, I don't necessarily like to extend the a, a, a dinner menu to be unnecessarily lengthy, but right now, in the moment, I would say the hot dates, very simple elevated bar snack, Induya stuffed dates with uh, cooling lavna. That's such a simple thing, but it's three ingredients and it is in perfect harmony and it plays really well to what, how I want the food to be to be perceived at, at the wine bar. This is a lot longer than my food menu, um, and there are lots of phenomenal things on it. Kudos to my my Psalm team for for creating such a phenomenal list. Um, and Sam, our GM and wine director, he's constantly finding under the radar producers in, in all parts of the world. Um, but I think I'm spoiled to say that our Solos Rosé, Jacques Solos Champagne Rosé, um, is my favorite bottle on the list. And I think I've had a fair amount of that. Honestly, my favorite spots are like those of my friends um, who are kind of like doing similar things, really executing amazing food, but not not in a stuffy environment. So I mean, I love I love going to see my buddies at uh, Diego at Racines down in Tribeca, neighborhood spots. My, my buddy, um, my buddies at at Popina in in uh, Brooklyn. Uh, Saigon Social in the Lower East Side, and uh, places that I, I love that are kind of like feeling like home. The most fulfilling part about this journey, being in this business, for sure, has been the camaraderie of the people that I've met along the way. Uh, building a team, you know, understanding the the struggles and the the highs and the lows of, of pushing through to the to this realm of, of where we are now. Um, that evolution is definitely that evolution with people beside me is definitely the highlight. It's it's all about people, and without my team, I'm definitely not in the place that I am. And uh, I've had the pleasure of working with uh, some of my absolute best friends and, and having them overlap as business partners and colleagues and be able to maintain those types of relationships, mutual respect and, and an energy around a common goal is, is definitely the highlight. We've been here running the domestic operation of Experimental Group for the last six years and it's the perfect opportunity right now in rebuilding New York to expand and open potentially another wine bar, potentially a hotel even, um, and then go above and beyond there. Firstly in New York, we want to continue to plant our seeds in New York, build that bigger and wider, and really represent Experimental Group in the best, strongest, most thoughtful, dynamic way for New York City and, and then beyond. So yeah, just keep pushing this cool brand where we don't take ourselves too seriously, even though we take the product and the service seriously. Uh, providing an uh, opportunity for people to really feel hospitality in a very down-to-earth way, relatable way, and somewhere where they can come day in and day out.
Hey, thanks for watching today. Hope you liked this video. Please subscribe to my channel, hit the notifications, and I'll see you next time. Oh yeah? What's uh what's different about it? It's not on the menu. <laughs> <laughs> we have never done it. It's for the Blanc the Blanc party. With this one is just to spring garlic, it's such a like such a cool element because it kinda of, like even though the Right. Um, the spring garlic kind of brings it back to like a, you know, a spring note or a summer note, right? Sure.